Welcome to the Yone Kaksha. So in today's session, we'll try to see that how to select a particular machine learning model based on the data that we have given. We all are aware that machine learning data science, these are now days a kind of buzzwords. And uh, there are a lot of algorithms which are available inside the machine learning as well. And sometimes we get confused that which model to implement in which particular situations. So here is just a guideline for you so that you can come to know that under which particular data, which model comes out, the best performance, or which model will give you the better the results for the hour, for whatever questions that you are going to solve. So let us just resume with this. So first of all, there are a lot of types of algorithms that are available inside machine learning, like supervised, unsupervised, semi-supervised, reinforcement, and so on. Supervised are nothing but those algorithms in which we have provided with the data, which consists of a value of dependent variable as well. For example, if you are generating a regression model in order to predict the value of the house properties, then you will be provided with the data which consists of the value of house properties and the other parameters, such as the square feet, number of bedrooms, number of bathrooms, and so on. And then you have to identify what is exactly the relation between all these variables and the price variables. Once you identify this way, the you know, relation between the variables. Next time, you can use this in order to predict what will happen in the future or what will be the price of certain property provided you with the value of square feet, the number of bedrooms, and so on. So suppose, uh, say we are provided with the data, I would like to show you one simple data set for this. So as you can see, this is a very simple data set that is there in front of you wherein we are having the value for ID, date, price, bedrooms, bathrooms, and so on. In this case, the case study is to predict the value of price in future when you will be provided with the number of bedrooms, the date at which it is purchased, the number of bathrooms, the number of, uh, you know, the square feet living area, the lot living area, the number of floors, whether it is provided with the waterfront or not, what's the view, what's the grade, what's the condition, and so on. So this is basically what we mean by the historical data. And in this historical data, you are also provided with something called as a dependent variable or y variable. So you have to identify what's the relationship in between all these variables with the price. Once you identify this relation, you can use this relation in future. So that if someone is providing you the value of square feet leaving or someone is providing you the value of square feet lot, the, you know, the type of the property, its condition, its grade, then you will, you will be able to predict what should be its price or what will be its price. So that's basically how, you know, this entire supervised machine learning algorithm works, where you are provided with the data of dependent variable along with independent variables. So while price is dependent variable, because when you change the bedroom, when you change the bathrooms, when you change the value inside the square feet leaving, when you change the value that is present for the grid, obviously it is going to impact on the value of price. So that's the reason why it is called as a dependent variable, because it depends on the value of the other variable. On the other hand, if you just, uh, you know, uh, take a look at bedrooms and the other one is great. It doesn't indicate that if you're having a higher grade, then always you'll be having the higher number of bedrooms and so on. So these two variables are not showing any kind of relation as such among themselves. That's why they are called as the independent variable. So for implementing regression, it is important that your dependent variable has to be numeric in nature. So in this case, as you are dealing with price as independent variables, which is numerical in nature, that's the reason we'll find out that in this case, you can implement any algorithm that comes under the category regression. And if you just check, this data seems to be linearly related to each other. That means as the number of bedrooms will increase, the price would increase. As the square feet will increase, the price will increase. That means every variable is having some kind of linear relationship with the price variable. So whenever you have such kind of direct or inverse relationship with the dependent variable, we can make use of something called as a linear regression. There exists a, a mechanism called as correlation or covariance that you can first check in among the various columns that are provided to you. If you find out that your variables are correlated, your variables are having a high covariance, then you can use that particular methodology such as linear regression. Because linear regression, as the name suggests, it works on the equation of line. So if your points are very close to the equation of the line, or you can say that if your points are showing some kind of linear relationship, such as direct or inverse relationship among the variables, linear regression would give you more productive results. 
So this is how basically we have judged that linear regression would be better for a given set of data. So again, if I just go back to the presentation that we were viewing. So in this case, as you can see, let us take one example that you want to predict the salary of a person and you are uh, given with some variable, say, age. So here, what you can see that these are such orange points, right? So this orange point defines the actual value. That means for every value of age, there will be some value of salary. So that value of age and salary makes a pair and that pair is simply given over here with respect to those points. Now we have to find out the line which passes through maximum number of points, which is not possible enough because you can't draw a line that pass through all points or that, that will pass the maximum number of points. And that's why we'll try to find out line that is closest to maximum number of points. So how to find out that? So uh, basically, suppose this is a particular value of x, then its respective actual value of y is nothing but this point that you can see in orange. What is going to be its predicted value? Its predicted value is nothing but anything that will be there on this line corresponding to this x value. Now what we can see that there exists a difference or uh, there exists a distance in between this point, that is this orange point and the point that you're plotting on the uh, on this line, right? So this difference is called as error or this difference is called as residue. So if you simply find out a summation of residual, then it is going to give you the total residual that is present in the data. But there is one issue in calculating the total residual. You can see that there are almost equal number of points above and below the line. So if you are going to add all these residuals, you might get, a, get the result as zero as well. So instead of directly adding or directly making the summation, it's better that take a square of those errors and then finally make the summation so that there is no chance that you know all the positive and negatives to get cut off at the value of error to come as zero. So that particular line which produces the least value for the error or least value for the squared error that will be considered as the best line, best fitting regression line. Suppose this is the best fitting regression line. Suppose I'm having some certain x value over here. And if I want to predict the value of y in future, I'll simply check the x value and its corresponding value of y from this line. So wherever this point cuts on this particular regression line, that is going to be my predicted outcome for the given data. So this is how we can uh, implement linear regression to predict the value of any continuous type of data. Then comes one more very interesting type of regression, which is called as logistic regression. This is specifically a type of binary logistic regression that I have plotted over here. Again, sorry, if you just can see in this particular plot, I have just tried to compare the linear with the logistic regression. In a linear regression, as we have seen right now, that it consists of equation of a line. In a logistic regression, your dependent variable is categorical in nature, which is always having only two possible categories. So for example, if I show you some data, so this is the data of heart. So as you can see that in this case, in this data consists of, just a second, this is just the previous one. Yeah, this is the correct data. So as you can see that here, the target variable is the dependent variable, which consists of the value as one or zero. Wherein one indicates that the person is having the chances of getting heart related disease and zero indicates that the person is not having chances of getting heart related disease. And the respective independent variables that are provided to you are age, sex, CP, that is chest pain and so on. So as the value of age increases, the probability of person getting heart related disease also increases. So though over here in a given data or in historical data, your dependent variable is categorical in nature, but when you're going to implement a binary logistic regression, you will not directly predict one or zero. You are going to predict probability of being one. So for this particular combination with the age of 60p, sex as male, chest pain as three, resting BPS as 143, cholesterol of 233, what are the chances that a person would get heart-related disease? So that's basically the probability you are going to calculate. If the value of probability comes out to be greater than 0 0.5, then you can classify it as one. That is nothing but a person having uh, uh you know higher chances of being heart related heart related disease patient and if you are getting the value of probability less than 0.5 then you may call as zero so this is basically how you are going to classify your probabilities either in the case of one or in the case of zero so here we have discussed two very interesting algorithms and in which situations to use them so logistic regression can be used when your dependent variable is categorical having only two possible outcomes and if your independent variables are again showing some kind of linear relationship with the probability of taking an event for the dependent variable, so in that case, you can go for logistic regression. Specifically, binary logistic regression will be used under the circumstances when your dependent variable 
is having only two possible outcomes. So I just hope this uh, makes it all doubt clear related to linear regression and logistic regression when to use which particular type of regression in the upcoming session we'll try to see how to use the different variables or how to use the different models in different situations till the time thank you for patiently listening to the session see you soon